All right, guys, so the, the title of this video is going to be Smoke and Mirrors. And, you know, it's kind of a phrase that I, you know, I like to say a lot of times because, you know, every, it, things aren't as hard as they appear. You know, they're designed to kind of trip you up. And this is a prime example of a question that's uh, built kind of in the, um, gosh, I want to say, how, how can I say this, in the, in the flavor of uh, a question that was even an NBME uh, type. Now, this question reads, the table below reports the survival of patients who were given a vaccine for a particular disease. And then you have this, this table here, and it says number of patients beginning at the interval, number of patients who died during the interval, and then the percent of patients who survived this interval. And of course, it gives zero to one, one to four, four to six, and six to 10. So a lot of information in here. Now, when you first look at this, you're like, oh my God, can I, you know, can I solve this in, in between one and two minutes, which is kind of your average time per question on, on the exam? Uh, and, and you can, okay? Once you know how to, to, to kind of see through these questions, you'll be able to solve these with really no problem. And it says, which of the following is the probability of a patient surviving 10 years? And then it has all these different answer choices, right? So again, you always look to see what they're gonna ask you first, the question itself. You can glance at the answer choices to kind of get some direction, but in math questions, you know, I, I would kind of not look at this so much because it's going to maybe throw you off because in math questions, it's you're going to have one single answer. Uh, so when I look at this question, I'm like, all right, it says, which of the following is the probability of a patient surviving 10 years? Now, I had the luxury of teaching uh, mathematics uh, to elementary school kids and high school kids. And so when it says the probability when I see probability, I know that my answer is going to be something with multiplication, okay? We're going to times it. We're going to multiply. Because probability essentially means what are the chances of, okay? What are the chances of? And anytime I see the word of in math, I always think multiplication. So that's where my mind's going. Surviving 10 years. Now, I know on this exam, they're not going to make me do some calculations that are going to take 10 minutes long. So I'm going to decipher this stuff and say, what's important, okay? The question says, surviving 10 years. So let's take a step back, and, be, and before we solve this, you're going to see how easy this is. Think about this. If I said, if I said, what are the chances of flipping a coin, right? We flip a coin, it's going to be either heads or tails. So if I say, what are the chances of flipping a coin, heads or tails, you're going to say, and let's just say, chances of doing it four times getting heads, okay? Four times getting heads if I flip a coin. And you'll see where I'm going with this, okay? Work with me. So four times getting heads. Well, the first time I flip it, it's gonna be one half, right? What about the second time? Well, if I flip it, they're independent of each other, so it's still gonna be one half the next time. But look what I'm doing here. I'm saying, well, to get heads two in a row, I'm gonna to have to multiply these guys. Okay, when I mean that, I mean one times one is one, and one, two times two is four. So be, if I were to get heads two times in a row, it's going to be one-fourth. But what if I had to do four, getting heads three times in a row? Well, then i got to multiply it by one-half again, because, again, it's, 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 a, it's a coin toss. And then to get that fourth heads, I would have to go one-half times one-half times one-half times one-half, because it's saying what is the probability... What are the chances of, and again, of and probability, I know it's multiplication, getting heads four times in a row. So in this situation, it's one half. Now, you can, if you're good at multiplying fractions, great. If not, I'm a, I just prefer decimals. Um, but again, you don't need, particularly need that in this little thing. But 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. Now, you're not going to be able to do that in your head, most likely. But you can sure do the fractions in your head in, th in this situation. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And then 8 times 2 is 16, okay? So 1 16th. The chance of getting heads four times in a row is 1 16th. Uh, and, you know, roughly, don't worry, guys, I did that ahead of time, 0 0.06, all right? So you're saying, all right, well, nice on that, but I know they're not going to ask me about flipping a coin four times in a row on the USMLE. And you're right, they're probably not going to do that. But the purpose of that is, look how easy this can be. The question says, which of the following is the probability of a patient surviving 10 years? All right, so when we look at this, zero to one years, it talks about all these patients, how many, how many that were there, the number who died, so how many survived? Uh, 800. Well, 800 out of uh, 1,000 is going to be 80% survived. Okay, so the chances during this first interval that you're going to survive are 80%. 
So in year two, you start, I mean, starting in year, between years one and four, you started with 800 people, 150 died. So 650 uh, remain, so 650 out of 800 is 81.2. So I can start to see where they got these numbers from, you know? So part of me feels like, all right, this is gonna be important to me because these two columns basically were just the math to make these. Because when I look at this, it's the same thing as the coin toss. Year one, or this, this interval one between zero and one, what's the probability of, of living, okay? Probability of living is, is 80%. Now I can say this in math, I, and I taught my, my students this, in math, I don't like percents, I like decimals, okay? I can use decimals. So there, So instead of saying 80%, I'm gonna say 0.8. Instead of saying 81.2%, I'm gonna go 0.812. Instead of 85%, of course, I'm gonna go uh, 0.85 and then 0.9 for that. Okay, so I just you always turn do this as a rule always turn your percents into Decimals, it'll save you every time Because we're going back to this question again. It says uh, Between between 0 and 1 it's 0.8. Okay What about the second interval between 1 and 4 years? Well, it's 0 0.812 and then what about the third, between four and six? They're, I mean, they're giving it to you, 85%, but they're expecting you to change to a decimal. And then between six and 10, it's 0.9, okay? Now, yes, could they make you work this out? They could, absolutely, they could. And you gotta, remember, top right hand, you gotta, you gotta calculate it, but I don't see them doing that. I, want, I just want them to, I think they just wanna make sure that you know some basic math principles, because what's the answer in this? If you go through all these answer choices, it's gonna be this one right here. Answer choice F. So I'm gonna make a video on how do you study for biostats, okay? This is a great question. And again, this was sent in, and again, it was made in the spirit of an NBME question that someone uh, kind of gave me. So it's not exactly the same, but it's similar enough to where if you saw this on the USMLE, I need you to be nailing this, okay? So when I say smoke and mirrors is, look, when you first saw this question, you had all this stuff over here, smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors, it's irrelevant, okay? This is the only meaningful piece. They're not, they're not asking you to be a mathematics major, they're just asking you, hey, do you know how what, you know, what these words can mean? Probability of, it means multiply, and then again, 0.8, I mean, yeah, 0.8 times 0.812 times 0 0.85, 0 0.9, and then you multiply those out and you'll get your answer. And again, smoke and mirrors here. Just because they put answer choice A through G, don't get, you know, when you're going to say, oh my God, there's so many answer choices, it's going to be hard. No, that's just a distraction. Again, smoke and mirrors here, guys. So I will make a video on how to how to work the math problems because I believe you should only under, have to understand this one time. And then from that point, it's reinforcing. It doesn't mean you have to watch this video over and over again. I don't want you doing that. I want you to watch this one time. I want you to print like this end sheet. So you can glance at these things and say, okay, if I do this, I see that one. It should take you no more than 10 seconds, if not less, per page once you understand this concept. But that's what you got me here for, right? I'm here to teach this stuff. Now, yes, it takes eight, nine minutes to learn this, or at least to see it in, de in detail, but it takes about five to 10 seconds just to reinforce it once you got it. So again, guys, when you get a tough problem on the OSMLE, zoom out for a second. They're not asking you to do something wild and crazy. It's usually something simple. And so just work the problem. Uh, and, and again, the more questions that you see, the better off you'll be long-term. And that's what I'm here for, to help you kind of guide you through this. So hope the video is helpful, guys.